Hi everyone, Franco from Your Guitar Academy. In this lesson, we're tackling the first A-shaped bar chord, that's the A minor shaped bar chord. So pick up your guitar, let's get started. Hey guys, I'm just letting you know that we're giving you every single video from this challenge course absolutely free right here on YouTube. So take your time, work your way through it and enjoy it. Now, if the time does feel right and you are ready to upgrade to a Guitar Club membership, then all the links will be in the descriptions below. Remember that with that upgrade, you'll get access to the full write-up, the backing tracks, the interactive tab for this particular course, and you get access to all of our courses, every player study, challenge course like this one, and everything else. On top of that, you also get progress tracking, access to all of our mentors, our community, and so much more. Check it out in the description below. Right, so we've seen the E shape bar chord first. We've seen the E major shape and then the E minor shape, which allowed us to play any bar chord, if it's major or minor, any chord that would be major or minor, we can play it. Now, why do we transpose only that E shape? We could actually transpose different shapes. Um, when it comes to traditional bar chords, we only talk about two shapes, the E shape, so E major, E minor that we've covered before, and the A shape. So A shape would be an A minor shape and an A major. A major is for the next lesson, don't worry about it yet. But let's look at that A minor shape. So if I'm playing a, an A minor open chord, so I'm not playing the low E string on this one. I start from the A string. So the A string is open. Got my finger number two um, on the second fret on the D string. Finger number three on the second fret of the G string. Index finger on the first fret of the B string. And then the open E string is open. <laughs> so the main thing I want you to really understand here is that chord is minor careful with that. It looks a lot like E major. They, they look very similar, but they're not. They've got nothing in common. Uh, for example, that chord's root note is A, which is the open A string. And that's why we try not to play that low E string when we, when we learn it and play it. We don't want to hear that as the base of that chord. So that's something to keep in mind. That bar chord we're about to play, that is based on that shape I've just shown you, is going to be minor even though it looks a lot like that E major we've seen on the second lesson. So everything else is exactly the same as the E shape though. The concept is the same. We're still taking that shape, swapping the fingers we're using. So now I'm using fingers three, four, and two to play the same notes. So still an A minor. But now I'm going to push that shape somewhere higher. Let's say fret number five, and I'm going to bar. Exactly the same way except the index finger doesn't have now to play that low E string because I'm not supposed to strum it. So that's actually good news. The A shaped bar chords, this one or the next one, well, we only strum five strings. It's one less string to bar, one less string to strum. It's a little bit easier. And usually this shape works quite well if you've mastered your E major shape bar chord because they look so similar. Again, look at this chord. We don't know the name of it yet. We just know it's minor because it's based on that A minor shape. But if I move everything up a string, that's now an A major. And we do know that shape. We've played it quite a lot. Um, but they don't sound the same at all. That's A major. And that's the new mysterious chord that we're going <laughs> to discover very soon. Okay, so let's go back to that shape. Again, you've got to adjust a little bit the position of your index finger because we're not barring that low E string. Don't bar that low E string. I see that way too often. If you bar that, that low E string here, if you, if you press on that string, you're actively playing a note that isn't your root note. And when you're, gonna, you're, and when you're going to strum that chord, it's going to make it sound a bit muddy. So you don't want that. What we want as much as we can is to just bar from the A string on, but my index finger is slightly touching the low E string. And that's enough to choke that string. So if I do touch it when I'm strumming, 
you can't really hear that A. That would be on fret five. Right, now, the other thing to remember is that shape is minor, that we know, but we don't know the name of that note yet. And that note that I play with my index finger on the A string is going to be the root note of my chord. Because again, when we're playing an A open chord, the root note is on the A string. So that rule doesn't change when we're transposing all these notes higher. So if I do that, the root note is still on the A string. But since I'm playing on that string, well, it's a different note. So it's time for us to learn the name of the notes on that A string. So remember that trick we said on the E string. We said fret number three is G, fret number five is A, fret number seven is B, GAB. So G, A, B. Well, on the next string, on the A string, the same three dots, but now played on the A string, obviously, would have the names C, D, and E. So effectively, effectively, what you've got is G, A, B, C, D, E. If I play them, we've got on the lowest string G, A, B, and then on the A string C, D, E. And that's quite easy to remember, G, A, B, C, D, E. And the other thing is sharps and flats work exactly the same way. And that's extremely consistent in music theory, luckily. So if this is C on fret number three on the A string, well, the note B4 is the note B because C and Bs are buddies. Okay? But after C would be C sharp. It's just the same as what we had here. It's the same note. Before D, for example, would be D flat. After D would be D sharp. Before E would be E flat. After E would be F and not, and not E sharp. <laughs> so remember E and F, just like B and C's, their buddies. Um, right, so if I play that chord here, let's break it down. That shape here is minor. So we know that chord is going to be something minor. The root note is here on fret number five, and we said G. A, B, C, D, E. So that note is D. So that chord is D minor. So D because of that root note, minor because of that shape. So try to play it string by string super slowly. Make sure it all sounds good. Make sure you're not pressing too hard. Careful with your wrist position. It's a new new position, so we don't want to pick up a bad habit of pushing forward, that kind of stuff. So be, keep being relaxed as much as you can, even though it's, it's a new shape. And try to transpose that shape. So that would be C minor, for example. That would be E minor. So try to explore the fretboard a little bit, because it's something we haven't really talked about before, because that was hard enough on its own. But the, the tricky thing with bar chords is also that the frets are all a different size on the guitar. So some people will like playing higher here, and some people will like playing higher down there. It doesn't matter what you like, we'll have to play them all anyway at some point, but explore the fretboard. Try to play random chords and ask yourself, okay, what's the name of that chord? So this one, for example, on fret number two, let's figure it out together. That fret here on fret number three on that string is C, it's on the dot. So B4 C would be B, so that's a B minor. And when you think about it, it's quite logical. That would be A minor open. So on fret one would be A sharp minor or B flat. And if I go up a semitone again, that would be B minor. So that's all we're doing with bar chords. We're just transposing these notes all together into a different shape. Time for the little challenge on this lesson. So the backing track is actually the same track we've seen on the previous lesson. So it's still the same chord. It's still um, B minor, G major, G flat minor. That we used to play like this. We used to play B minor with an E shape on uh, fret number seven. Then we had G major on fret number three major, so with the middle finger, and then G flat minor on fret number two. But let's try something. Let's try to figure out another way of playing that B minor that we used to play quite high up the neck over there. So that is B minor with an E shaped bar chord. But we could play it with an, the new A minor shape. 
And we've just seen it actually, A, um, sorry, B minor would be with your index finger on fret number two, because fret number two here is the note B. So if I build my chord from that fret number two on, that's a B minor. So that chord would be B minor. And then since we're keeping the same backing track, the next chord would still be G major, which weirdly enough, because the two shapes are so similar, the A minor shape and the E major shape, visually they're so similar. Well, it would sort of look the same, except I would be upper string, so that's now an E major shape, and brought back a fret here, so that's G major. So again, don't get confused, that's a B minor, but that would be a G major. And the last chord was G flat minor, which is down here, one fret, and it's minor, so minor the middle finger, because it's an E shape. But then the transition back to B minor would be a little bit easier, because you've got to drop down all these fingers down a string and add the middle finger again to make it an A minor shape. So we've got B minor, G major, G flat minor that we played twice on that track, and back to B minor. So let's do that with the backing track. Two, three, four. So B, two, three, four. Is that one? Sorry, four and G. Okay, so B minor with a new shape, G major, two, three, four and G flat, minor, three, four, and we still need twice, two, same track, back to B, two, three, four and G major, two, three, four and G flat, three, four and another one, Okay, so you see how with the same track and the same chord sequence, the same chord progression, you now have two options. You could either go for B minor over there or B minor with the new A minor shape bar chord. Ultimately, it's up to you as a guitar player to choose which shape you're going for. But I just want to open a door there and we're not going to dive into that. The first B minor we've played, this one here, I'm strumming six strings. The new one here, the A shape, I'm strumming five strings. So even though it's the same chord with the same notes inside those two shapes, the chords actually sound slightly different. And that's what we call the voicing of a chord. It's the way these notes inside these shapes we're playing are stacked together. It's not just because there's one less string to strum that they sounds different. It is part of why the voicing is different, but not only. Um, so they do sound different. And ultimately, that's why it's up to you as a guitar player. Do you think, well, I'd rather go for that shape because it sounds better. And we want to do that because it sounds better, not because it's easier to play. I mean, ultimately, again, if I play that B minor shape here with the E shape bar chord, the E minor shape bar chord, the transition to G major is, to me, quite easy, I think, because it's pretty much the same shape. I just add that middle finger. But if I go for B minor here to G major there, well, there's a bit of a jump, but the shapes are closer. So some people will like playing B over there. Some people will like playing B over there. And that's why the difference should be what you like the sound of and not what's the most comfortable option. Because if you always go for the most comfortable option, eventually you'll be stuck with a song that's got that uncomfortable transition that you don't like. So practice both. Um, that track is quite long, so you could, in theory, on that little challenge, sometimes play B minor over there, sometimes play B minor over there. Now, of course, this course is, I mean, this lesson is, you know, focusing on that A minor shape. So I do want you to try this one at least every other time, just to start with. Um, but take your time with it. It's definitely a new challenge, it's a new shape, and you've got plenty of time to get your head around it. Right, good luck with it. Have fun with that track, and I'll see you on the next lesson.
Bye. Massive thank you from me and the rest of our wonderful tutors for watching this video. If you do want to check out another video, another playlist, you can click right over here. Otherwise, if it feels like the right time for you and you're ready to give it a go, our Guitar Club link is right up here. You can get a 14-day free trial and you'll get access to our complete courses, our amazing community, and everything you need to properly upgrade and start loving the process of learning the guitar. I'll see you later.